Okay, now that we've looked at variables and well-formed formulas, we're ready to bind those variables with quantifiers. And so this lecture is just going to look at the basic idea between the two quantifiers we'll be using, all, and some construed as at least one. There are two of these, and the first of them is this upside down A, which we pronounce typically for all, and this is equivalent with a number of English phrases, things like every, each, of course all, but also any. Let's see a sample sentence using this. So we'll put our quantifier for all, which binds a variable like this. It goes with a variable, so we get this phrase for all x, and we can say, use the predicate puppy, x is a puppy. Now what this says is that everything is a puppy, which is untrue. But suppose we wanted to say something a little bit more measured, like every puppy is cute which, depending on your opinion, might come out as an analytical truth. This is equivalent with what we actually read as a conditional phrase, and we're going to look at this in greater detail later on. We would say, for all x, if x is a puppy, then x is cute. Such then is the universal quantifier, which allows us to make these universal statements, right? Every puppy is cute, or every dog is a mammal, that kind of thing. The next quantifier is the existential quantifier. The existential quantifier allows us to make claims about some or at least one item. So we express it as for some, as we did with for all, for all x, with the universal quantifier. And it's equivalent with the English phrases at least one or some or a or n, as in the sense of the indefinite article. So here are some examples. Suppose we wanted to say something is a puppy. We'd express this as follows. For some x, x is a puppy. And this is true just in case there's at least one puppy. We can express this in English as something is a puppy or even there is a puppy. Now, unlike with the universal quantifier using conditionals, with the existential quantifier, if we want to say more than one thing about an object, we do so with conjunctions. And we're going to see how this works in greater detail later on. So for instance, suppose we wanted to say some puppy is a Dalmatian we would express this as there exists an x such that x is a puppy and x is a Dalmatian. So we use the and symbol rather than the conditional sign. Again, we'll see how this works in greater detail. These then are the two quantifiers and the remainder of the course is going to be dedicated to looking at sentences which incorporate these and that's just a brief overview of how they work.